subscribe to the books on toast channel or maybe you'll run out of petrol on a desolate road hello and welcome to the books on toast channel my name is sharon today we are interviewing a driver who hitchhiked in a truck in search for chai and went on to travel the world by road in gaddis and bulls if you don't know what bulls is please uh, please do research on your own he is now uh, amongst india's foremost travel writers you know all you travel bloggers who have been going wanderlust in the last decade rishad was patient zero of this disease here is the monk who went on a gedi welcome rishad sam mehta to the books on toes channel thank you very polite very polite guest thank you, thank you for having me okay you agree with all this description of yours that i just gave yeah yeah i agree <laughs> i agree i agree very much yes okay very good okay you agree you are the monk who uh, who uh, went on a gedi basically that's who you are okay after i know i know monk ha huh? <laughs> it's okay but it's fine i did monk, monk sir monk sir all monk sir all good and very holy and spiritual all that You haven't found yourself on the road yet. No, no, I am not on looking for myself on the road. <laughs> I am on, I am on looking for good food, for 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 uh, good travel companions. I mean, good experiences, stuff like that. Not to find myself. Okay, that's good. All that is good, all that is good in movies only. Yeah. <laughs> so let me clarify to you guys what Rishad really does. Rishad is India's Bill Bryson. Only he doesn't write about science. but he's taken many road trips and test driven cars for auto magazines like autocar and is the author of three incredible books hotty across india fast cars and fidgety feet and the long drive home all of which are by the way on kindle unlimited he has driven on some of the world's best roads hiked across a glacier looked a grizzly in the eye and made friends all over the world i happen to be one of those lucky people whom he has never taken on a road trip before so rishad please tell me why that has not happened yet Why would you never ask me? That's why. Excuse me. <laughs> have you ever asked me? I have to ask you uh, for you to take me on a date. Obviously, if you ask me, now how can how can how can I tell random women? Random women. Now, now I'm, I'm a, a random, random woman. woman. You ask everybody says, "Arey, yeah, you tell me. I will come. I will be. I will be there. You just give me a call." Call and then when you call up and say I'm leaving, I'm leaving in three days. Pack your bag and come. Arey, no, yar, I've got assignment. You know, I've got this appraisal. You know, I can't get leave. Arey, you know, my my son or daughter's got diarrhea. You know, you know stuff like that. They're all all kind of excuses. But having said that, having said that, wait, let me try. I've got a few friends. Who always when I tell them they just drop everything, pack their bags and come. By the way, Rishad also has his own YouTube channel, which we will link for all of you guys to follow him to know what fancy road trips he's taking and he's talking about. I am going to talk to him about his books. Okay, my first question to you, Rishad, is what are you reading right now? I'm right now I'm rereading a book which uh, I read many years ago and it's my favorite because it's this whole whole story of it, it's it's history spanning. Millennia and it's uh, it's wild adventure and it's it's really grandiose places and stuff like that. It's this book by Wilbur Smith called River God. Ah, uh -huh. that's the one I'm reading right now, uh -huh. and I absolutely love it. It is it is it is. I can't tell you how. I mean, the way he's written it's it's one of his best books, and the scale and the scale of adventure is like like. Uh, nothing i've read before it's based it's set in ancient egypt even if even before the discovery of the wheel in ancient egypt wow it's set so far back and it's fantastic it's really great and the central character in that is a eunuch called taita so i'm reading the third or fourth time over wow that sounds fascinating okay so uh, i would also like to tell everybody that i am listening to ghachar ghochar by vivek shanbag and narrated by darpan mehta it's on story tell It's a book many guests have spoken about on this channel before, but I hadn't read it, and I decided to hear it as an audio book. It's a psychological thriller, and it's crazy. It's really gripping. Oh, and by the way, if you want to hear audio books and story tell, use the link in our bio for exclusive discount. Okay. Also, yes, sponsors, uh, Rishad. Let's talk about your author journey. So, tell me about uh, uh, Hotty Across India. Tell me how the idea of the novel came about, and what the story is about. 
I used to do this column in Autoka India called Driving Destinations and then Discover India. So uh, I was very fortunate because my job with Autoka India every month I would I would drive I mean I would fly to a different place in India maybe Delhi or Chandigarh or Madras or Chennai or Bangalore or or any any metro pick up a car from there and drive and do a road trip to a beautiful destination and I would come back and uh, tell people how to go there. Now keep in mind that this was all uh, during uh, 2001, 2002. You know, in the time when there was no Google Maps, there was no in-car navigation. So I would sit and mark down the roads. I would, I would really stop at every every turn. I would mark down the kilometers. I would generate a whole route map, a standard starting point and a standard ending point. And I would map the route between that. I would tell people where the clean toilets are, where the best chai is, where the best food is, what the shortcuts are. What the condition of the of the roads are, where the clean toilets for women are, all that, all that was my job, right? I would also, as a collateral to that, I would also go to these beautiful places, okay, and I would explore them, and uh, I would uh, sometimes I would make friends over there, I would meet people over there. So these are little incidents that I would write down and keep with me that this is what happened, and I would write them in sometimes in newspapers or magazines as travel stories. So hot tea across India was a is a whole collection of those travel stories across India. The reason why I call it hot tea across India was because uh, chai tea is such an integral part is such an integral part of travel in India. I mean, tell me one journey where you that you've made in India, one road trip or even train trip where you've not had chai on the road, you know, or you've not found someone selling chai. So you may not not find a dhaba, you may not find. Find uh, you will not find a place to stay, but you'll always find that little chai tapri where you can stop and refresh yourself and stuff like that. That's why I call it hot tea across India. Mm-hmm. It is it is not a book about different teas across India. I mean, I got a lot of flack initially about that. But why do you name it like that when it's? I mean, people picked it up thinking that oh, this is a book about different teas in India. But if they turn the cover around, they would have seen that it is not because I've clearly mentioned in the back of the book that it's not. Uh, the first thing is that. This is not a book about tea across India, mm. and I've got some really funny incidents of uh, of motorcycling across the Himalayas, of driving to different places, about a place in Kerala where someone wanted to burn my car because I was driving on a on a striking day, you know, when, on a day of when they want strike, so stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, I like it. It's it's my favorite book of all the books I've written. I really enjoy writing that the most. Okay, so tell me the most memorable part of writing and recounting your stories. I mean, your earliest uh, trip that you uh, recount in it is the one time when you took a truck, like you hitchhiked in a truck, and then you. Yes. So I mean, that's like way back, right? That's in like late ninety. Ninety eight. Yeah, like the oldest story would be ninety eight, and the latest story would be from from two thousand six or two thousand five. Yeah. How did you pick out the stories you wanted to put together in this, and how do you remember? I did this. I did this thing with Autoka India from 2001 to 2008. One story about uh, Jolly Junjunwala. Hmm. Tell that story. Tell yeah. that story. So, we were, I was driving to Amritsar from Delhi, and uh, uh, I had stopped at Murthal. I was I was taking my parents to Kashmir, so I told them that instead of driving off, because we had a long drive to do from Kashmir to Srinagar. I mean, from Jammu to Srinagar to Leh. Huge drive, so I told them for the first bit, you all go by the Shatadi from Delhi to Amritsar. I'll meet you all there. I'll bring the car. So I had stopped at Murthal, and then this uh, I was about to start when there was this furious knocking on my window, and and shared the putter. So that uh, I put the window down, and uh, oh, so he's talking to me. That Sirji, please, please, emergency, please help us, please help us, please help us. Uh, Bus, bus has gone. Bus has gone. Please, ah, they know, they know. My mother, do you? I said, what happened? He got into a car, and then his sister-in-law and his wife also got in behind, and they had stopped at Burtal, and uh, and they got down, and and this this Mr. Jolly, Mr. Jolly Junjunwala had ordered a lavish breakfast, and and before he could finish it, the bus had bus driver had honked three times and taken off, and and they were left behind. And now all their jewelry and all their wedding finery was in the bus, so full panic mode, you know. So, so then it was the big bus chase. So then I chased the bus down and stopped the bus, and and they got on, and that was a, that was a great story. Jolly Junjunwala was was I mean 
he was he was full full in that hindi movie chase mode and uh, this wife and his sister in law were full melodrama mode sobbing loudly you know that hi rabba my mere dagina mere jewels mere this that and all that it was it was it was fantastic your impression of punjabi people is very funny i love it they know they know mere mother ka bola Okay, cool. I'm going to shift gears and talk to you about the long drive home, which I love. So I read it on like a plane ride, and I read it like in about an hour and a half, and I loved every second of it. I was sitting alone and giggling in my own aisle. So thankfully, nobody else heard me going crazy. But it's such a funny and an amazing journey. So I want you to first like uh, talk about the overland trip that you took from Munich to Mumbai. first let's give some context to uh, our viewers and tell them what the history of this journey traditionally is talk about that there's always been a land route from from europe to india always i mean before before the before the sea route there was always a land route right it went it went over the top of india and you know it's called the the silk route not only materials flowed you know even even culture culture religious beliefs diseases germs even all that traveled across this in fact gunpowder also traveled by that route because gunpowder was invented by the chinese tea tea traveled across that route because tea was tea was first cultivated in china so it's a very old ancient route and it, it was it was called the hippie trail in the early the after the second world war when these all these hippies came looking for spirituality you know across across the uh, uh they would drive across uh, across iran and then going to afghanistan so it was always and, and this is something that has been very close to my heart this whole whole idea of uh, crossing continents putting your trust in one car and crossing entire continents and countries over and time zones over so many days to to get to another place where people will only fly you know of course the physical road is there the challenges are the politics mm. because uh, there are some countries that you can't go through for example the biggest no go is pakistan you just cannot drive your car into pakistan unfortunate sad i wish we could do one day because that really cut short the journey i mean you can you can drive from pakistan into iran into turkey into europe in a day mm. <laughs> that's what that's what if you are a if you are a european passport or a british passport that's what you could do you could do that easily no problem I mean, the complication was that you had an indian passport and hence you could not go through this country exactly so we can't go we couldn't go through india hmm. so we had to we had to uh, take the long that's why the long drive home hmm. the long way around so we had to go from europe into belarus hmm. across russia hmm. into mongolia into china into burma hmm. and then into northeast india hmm. i mean it's 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 really mind boggling that to, we had to do a to come from the from the western world we had to enter through the eastern border of india hmm. not the western border and then we had to drive another 4 5 000 kilometers across india to come to bombay so how many uh, kilometers was this the, like whole journey from 22000 20, approximately 20, yeah the journey of a lifetime for many people journey of a lifetime yes absolutely one of the highlights from the book uh, was the fact that you took a, a audi q7 that was manufactured in india you flew it to munich and then from munich you drove it to bombay right that was the whole story and also you had a maharashtra number plate and it was a right wheel drive and things like that right so i think one of one of my favorite things in the book was that you took this maharashtra number plate wali audi q7 in famous historical locations and you wanted to take those photos so those sections were my favorite i love that that was one of that was one of my things to do i wanted to do that to get a picture of the car because you we were passing so many landmarks of the world you know we were passing that famous astronomical clock in prague i wanted to take a picture there then the famous old town of warsaw there then that same bazils cathedral you know in moscow that that very colorful cathedral with the different multi color domes we were crossing that then of course lake baikal then the great wall of china that was some there was there was phenomenal there was phenomenal the great wall of china was phenomenal to to drive the car right to the base of the great wall then uh, of course uh, in india the taj mahal where did you take a photo with dinosaurs 
Uh, that was that was in Erlian Hot. Erlian Hot. It's called. It's a place called Inner Mongolia, but actually it's in China, and that's a huge dinosaur graveyard. A lot of, in fact, there are species over there that have not been found anywhere else in the world except there. Nice, very cool. Okay, so uh, one more incident in the book that I really loved was uh, in the chapter, um, and then the farmers began to dance. Uh, that whole part where I think you were at the Belarus. Um, uh exit from poland into belarus right that immigration checkpoint um can you just like can you just recount that for our viewers like what happened with the immigration guards that was the first that was the first border crossing because we had been right across europe no problem you know european countries there's no border as such then the first border crossing was poland to belarus and the belarusian guards just couldn't understand why someone would want to drive to drive drive you know like for example Belarus is here, and India is here. Okay, so why are you going this way and then coming to India? They just couldn't get it, and the language problem. And then there was this this document called the Karne, which is not recognized, which is not recognized in in Belarus, or it's not required. And we removed that, and then they didn't know because they had to sign sign on it. In the end, we realized we didn't need a signature, but that confused them further. And uh, then they said you can't cross through this border; you cross through the other border. So we went back, and the GPS kept on taking us back to the same border. So we had to ask local people, and uh, and and to explain where the where the border was. Okay, so we drew a line in the mud, and then said, "This is Poland, and this is Belarus." And we jumped over it, saying that we have to jump. Okay, the farmers saw some kind of dance, so they started jumping over the over the over the line. There's a lot of lot of document. The problem is, it's not so simple driving across. There's so much documentation at every bloody country crossing across. But there's this very very nice website called called the Caravanistan. Mm-hmm. Caravanistan mm-hmm. that really gives a lot of information. Okay, okay. We'll be sure to put a link to that in the description box below in case you guys are interested in doing an overland journey. Okay, so okay, I'm gonna get some book recommendations from you. because uh, that's something that our viewers really look forward to so uh, rishad if you could give me three book recommendations of books that you really love okay three book uh, i'll tell you there's one there's one uh, book by peter mile i think called called one year in provence okay i like second world war books right so there's this book called a uh, a bridge too far by Cornelius Ryan, I think, and that's very special for me because because I read this book and about all these battles in the Second World War in Europe to get the bridges over the Rhine. The Allies wanted to get these bridges over the Rhine, but uh, it was a, an operation called Market Garden which failed. I found a GPS uh, map, a cycling map, and then I did a cycling trip in in Holland. That's where all the bridges were. and i went to all these bridges where the battles were fought on cycle it was great because all in the flat country wow so i read this book and then i found the map and i went and visited all the places then another book i like is of course another wilbur smith book called cry wolf it's again fabulous adventure set in 1930s in, in ethiopia that is a beautiful book i love that book that's another great book if you could offer some quick tips for people who want to do road trips in india maybe your top 5 quick tips number one first of all if you want to do a road trip in india the first thing is is you you have if you're going with a companion see that you get along with the companion acha otherwise it can turn into a horrible horrible experience trust me <laughs> secondly you need to have patience okay don't aim to get to places that are really far away understand because i mean is this is india you know there will be traffic jams there will be road blocks there will be things that you don't expect that's the whole beauty of driving in india go to places that you know places that are really advantages to a road trip i mean i just came back from zanskar that is beautiful that really is is the epitome of road trip because you can't get there any other way except by by road you know okay the food stop at local dhabas enjoy the food i mean I'm telling you, you don't have to stop at fancy dhabas. You stop at normal little dhabas. Also, the food that they cook are f- is fantastic. I would suggest that that know your car well. Mm. Okay, know your car. At least know how to change a puncture, mm. or better still, know how to repair a puncture. 
that's awesome okay these are really good tips i'm going to use all of these tips especially the punch yeah, yeah. okay i know uh, we've come to the clickbait round uh, uh, rishad um, i've actually made a game just for you it's called gaddi tinder kise de naal pyar kundiya tu bach ke rahi ve tu hun hun hoyi mut yaar kundiya tu bach ke rahi ve tu hun hun hoyi mut yaar kundiya tu bach ke rahi so uh, basically what it is is i'm going to give you four scenarios and a choice choice of two to three cars for each of those scenarios you have to swipe right on the car that fits the situation the best okay okay, okay. cool so the first situation is about driving through snow these are your three okay. options uh, a hummer a gypsy or an endeavor endeavor why well, i i i think a hummer if it's all is too heavy it might sink down the snow huh. okay the gypsy is a great car great car on snow but it's a horrible car on tarmac and to get to snow you're definitely going to go through tarmac right I mean, you're not going to drive on snow all the time. You're going to definitely drive on normal roads, okay? And the gypsy's got no dumb. It'll just stick at. It'll it'll stay at hundred, hundred and ten, and that too, really flogging it. The Endeavour is a great car. It's so comfortable. It's lovely. It's aram. It's uh, it's nice and roomy, and it is very capable on snow also. Okay, got it. Second uh, situation is you're driving through slush, okay? Mm. And these are your three options: a thar, a jeep, or a swift. I would take the Jeep. Why? Swift has got low ground clearance, so it might get bogged down in the slush, bush, right? Thar, thar is simply, is simply, simply too bumpy. I mean, the thar is simply too bumpy. Okay, and the Jeep, Jeep is, I mean, Jeep is the the universal off roader. It's it's the it's the SUV. It was it was the SUV that was an SUV before the term SUV was invented. I mean, the Jeep. The Jeep is what won the Allies the Second World War. Very, very clear in our answer. Okay, a uh, third situation is you're driving through a potholed highway, and it's a sedan. It's it's three sedans. Okay, a uh, Audi, a BMW, or an Escape. I take the BMW. Why? Well, I can I can avoid the potholes, but I simply love BMWs. They are such fun cars to drive. Okay, awesome, good answer. uh your final final scenario is you're driving through very uh, choco block mumbai bastis and so these are your three options so you have a ferrari a lamborghini or a nano uh, i would i would love to take the ferrari but that would be impractical so i would take the nano i would take the nano yeah it's very practical if i if i scratch it somewhere or that it's not going to break my heart you know you know probably and i mean i mean if i if i if i scratch a ferrari or if i if i break something on it the cost of repairing that would cost me about 40 nanos you know so sad <laughs> that's fair okay great okay cool one last question before i let you go uh, what are you working on next anything you want to like plug and give a shout out to anything you can tell us what's next for rishad so I'm, i'm making these uh, i've always been a travel writer but my new found joy as such is uh, is making these uh, travel road trip travel videos across india that's what i've been doing so i've been absolutely loving it you know i mean and all my travel writing is coming in handy when i write the script for it plus all those eight years that i spent traveling to different parts of india all that's also coming in handy because now i know i know that these are the places that i want to go back again these are the places that are pretty and i i will get good content from here so i've been revisiting those places i've been to Kerala. I've been to Zanskar. I've been to Kashmir. I've been to the Kumau. I'm thinking of going uh, to Central India now because that was very pretty. So that's what I'm currently working on. Okay, super. Okay, great. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much, Rishad, for spending this hour with us. Um, all of you guys who are watching, uh, all of the books that we discussed are in the description box below. Please pick them up and do follow Rishad's channel on YouTube for more of his road trip road trip experiences. And meanwhile, if you like this video, please give give us a thumbs up. Even if you don't like it, give us a thumbs up anyway. Okay, thanks. Uh, share this video with your friends. Comment on it. Subscribe to the channel and stay safe. And go on a road trip. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. See you. Take care.